Creating jobs and opportunities is crucial for a community to thrive. That's why economic... And the special session Lancaster Major LC Citizens Oversight Committee will come to order tonight. Um, may I have the roll call, please? Committee members, Derryberry? Absent, Burden? Present. Yeager? Present. Vice Chair Harvey, absent. Chair Vos? Present. We have a quorum. Thank you. Um, committee member Burden, so used to call me commissioner, um, will offer a brief invocation and I'll lead the pledge. If you'd please stand. All right. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for this opportunity to come together once again in service of our great city. I ask that you continue to bless all of our city's residents, all of the staff, everyone involved in making Lancaster a great place. Bless all the committee members here. Bless those who are absent today. I pray that they are safe and their families are taken care of. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Please join me for the pledge. Ready? I pledge allegiance. Thank you. Uh, do we have any speakers, cards with public business from the floor? It's all staff today, it looks like. All right. Uh, the first item, action item, is our com um, approval of the minutes of the previous meeting of March 8, 2023. May I have a motion, please? A motion to approve the minutes of the last meeting. Second. Thank you. Any discussion? Please vote. You want to reset it? Yeah, reset Thanks. There we go. That's better. <laughs> Three with three yeses with two absent. All right, tonight uh, our new business is, a present, is presentations relative to the fiscal 23-24 budget. Finance Director George Harris will be sharing information with us tonight. Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. And for putting on, on the record, that is a sharp jacket you're wearing. Yeah, that's really about the is. second time I heard that today, so I yeah. appreciate it. And I heard it for both of you, so that's good. Um, <laughs> third, we'll take. Well, uh, as you know, we, we try to meet um, at least the three times a year. This is going to be the last time of this particular fiscal year to talk about the Measure LC expenses um, that, we've, that we've taken to council to be included in the budget for fiscal year 2023 and 24 which starts uh, July 1st, so I'm just in, the, in a couple of weeks. I will have, I have a, a long presentation. I'm not gonna do it by myself. I brought my cast of characters, the other department heads here in the city who specialize in spending the money. Um, <laughs> they're, they're all very good at it too, by the way. Uh, and they do a great job at, at all the respective roles in the organization. Uh, and then I'll come in at the end and close with the, the financial specifics of kind of how, how much we're collecting, what, what the trending has been, and kind of how it's been spread. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Marissa Diaz, uh, Director of Public Works, followed by Marissa Sonia Patterson, a Director of the Parks Department. And then Rod Armelin is our new Public Safety Director who's going to come in and, and talk about the exciting things that we got going next fiscal year with his department. And then I'll come through with the close at the end. So. With this, I'll turn it over to Marissa. Great, good afternoon and welcome. Good evening, thank you. Okay, we'll start with projects and programming um, and city beautification up first. 
Um, for city beautification, the community development and public works departments have completed landscaping renovations at the Lancaster Boulevard and 15th Street West roundabout, on Avenue J from 15th Street West to 20th East, on Avenue L from 15th Street West to 17th Street West, and on the west side of the bike path along Sierra Highway. The east side of the bike path on Sierra Highway is up next and will be completed in fiscal year 24. The Community De Development Department has also developed the Housing Rehabilitation Program. This program will provide grants and no interest forgivable loans to income qualified homeowners in need of repairs. The program will officially launch in July. The Community Development Department has also completed acquisition of the Antelope Valley Union High School District building on Sierra Highway. This building will become the future home of the city's public safety office. Public Works has cleaned up 13,823 illegal dumping locations, up 361% since last year. And we cleaned up 618,949 square feet of graffiti, up 21% up since last year. So to continue our ongoing efforts in fiscal year 24, we'll be appropriating $766,000 uh, yeah, $766,000 towards illegal dumping and encampment cleanup. The city manager's office and public works completed phases one and two of the city hall modernization project, which included renovation and modernization of the entire first floor. The third and final phase, including everything on the second floor of city hall, will be completed next week with final move-in and staff relocations in July. In partnership with the AV Fairgrounds, we have completed 30% design of the nearly 140,000 square foot Antelope Valley Event and Evacuation Center. We have added a second separate building to the project that will house the Emergency Operations Center. And we will be at 60% design in the fall. To complete the design of the AV Event and Evacuation Center, we will be adding 4 million to the project in fiscal year 24. Design will be complete and the project is expected to advertise in March 2024. And this is a sneak peek of the latest interior concepts. So with that, I'll turn it over to Sonia. And good afternoon, welcome to you. Good afternoon, thank you for having me. Uh, so the Parks Department uh, completed a number of uh, parks and facility maintenance upgrades throughout this fiscal year. Uh, most notable um, on the slide is reflected our upgrades to Old Memorial Parks Athletics Field 3 and 4. Um, they required a lot of TLC, as you can see from this um, picture. Um, they, so they were laser leveled, infield dirt was added, and new sod was added as well. Um, we removed the lips between the inner and outer fields. Um, replaced base anchors, pitching mounds, all making the uh, facility safer for our patrons that play there. Uh, the soccer field also received a significant improvements in their athletic turf. Um, we installed a new compost, reseeded um, sod. It was 181,000 square feet of sod, so that's a lot of sod to put down. That was all done in-house by our amazing maintenance staff. Um, so other notable improvements include um, uh, renovations to a number of public restrooms, uh, improvements to our HVAC systems at a variety of facilities, um, shade coverings, LED lighting at facilities, um, renovations to basketball courts, booster pumps, it goes on and on and on. Um, so we've done a lot of work in our parks and facilities to keep them in um, operable condition for our public. Next one. Um, we also had a successful renovation of our batting cages at Owen Memorial Park. Um, in just a few months since its opening, we've received positive feedback from the community and seen an increase in attendance and revenue. Um, so it's clear that these renovations made a difference and an impact for our community and were well worth the investment. Um, the, each change has contributed to a more enjoyable experience um, and more convenience for our patrons there. So that improvement included uh, new machines, um, new um, uh, rubbers uh, mounds that they uh, stand on um, when they bat, um, netting, 
Um, and we also unveiled a new logo um, that's uh, updated and more, inv um, more welcoming and inclusive to our community. So at LPAC, um, we've ended another successful season with a variety of performances and improvements to the facility. Uh, the main stage featured nine performances. Um, those are season performances. Uh, I'm sorry, 25 season performances, nine of which were sold out. So that's an, a, a, a great accomplishment for our team over there. Um, in addition, the theater hosts the Arts for Youth program, um, which provides local students an opportunity to enjoy theater performances throughout the school year. Um, those are free of charge um, or a nominal charge, and the foundation also provides transportation to encourage those students and help those schools get their students there. Uh, we also have a number of companies and residents uh, who feature their programs there, um, and so they all bring local talent um, to the LPAC and help make a vibrant culture for the center. So coming up in uh, the next fiscal year, uh, we have another exciting uh, season with 28 season performances booked. Um, those will be announced in August, um, so we encourage you to check it out and book your tickets for the next season. Um, it'll be a variety of music, theater, dance, family-friendly performances. Um, in addition to the 28 season performances, um, LPAC will once again offer our Youth um, for Arts program and outreaches. Um, we'll also be welcoming back, welcoming back our uh, companies and residents, and they'll bring a full season of shows again. Uh, several improvements um, that are planned at LPAC, LPAC this coming year are a new um, common flooring, artist, new flooring in the artist common area, sorry about that, um, and black box stage um, floor replacements, as well as exterior paint of the LPAC, um, and emplacement of our main power switch to keep us up and running in the event of a power, power failure. Community Center, so we had a number of exciting programs, events, and improvements took place at the Community Center this past fiscal year, um, which just celebrated its first um, birthday in March. Um, the, improve, the programs we had at the facility this year include a preschool enrichment program, uh, enrichment and courses for teens and uh, children. We also did a number of neighborhood community cleanups to engage the neighborhood around the Community Center. Uh, we had a coffee with a deputy, um, and hosted a family game and movie nights, as well as we completed a, or installed a new playground with shade um, that's uh, specific to our preschool age children there at zero to five years old. Um, the Lancaster Community Center unveiled their new logo just on June 9th um, in preparation for their new summer programming this fiscal year, as well as a full year of programming. Um, so we have uh, ramped up classes, which include preschool program for early learners of single parent um, households, which will be free to those single parent households that qualify. We have a number of STEM, STEM focused programs from DJ, music production, um, video game creation courses, and bilingual um, and leadership and financial literacy courses for our youth and teens. Um, we're also planning a community backpack giveaway that will be held in July where we're giving free backpacks to children of the community and school supplies, and that's in partnership with a number of um, local nonprofits in the area. So in addition to our programs and events that will be held at the community center this year, we have a number of upgrades that will continue to happen, um, occur at that building, um, in significant improvements to our plumbing and our men's and women's restrooms, installing a building-wide PA system, um, and new technology um, assets that will help us with check-in and check-out and help with the security of that building um, for our patrons that are participating, participating there. And that concludes my program. Thank you. Turn over to Rod. Exciting. Thank you. <laughs> Good afternoon, <laughs> Chief, and welcome. Glad to be here. It's good to see all of you. So uh, excited to talk to you about what's coming up in public safety. Uh, it's been about a year now, close to a year, that uh, I've been here and, and that we've started redoing things. Uh, so uh, we're full steam ahead on our hybrid policing program. Uh, we've actually hired quite a few personnel already, uh, and I'm glad to tell you that we have, uh, I have my assistant director who's here and we also hired uh, uh, a big piece is the report writers, our law enforcement technicians, who are the folks that are out there trying to reduce those response times and get 
to the calls for service and provide the people with the reports they need in a more timely fashion. It's one of the issues that's been a real bad problem here. So, uh, and obviously there's tons of equipment that we're hiring and purchasing now. Uh, um, we are advancing our technologies and changing our vehicle approach and uh, giving all of our personnel the equipment they need, including the ones who are already here existing. Uh, we're also doing some policy development. Uh, that was needed as well. And with our law enforcement officers coming, and by the way, we project them to be on the ground at the start of the new year, uh, January. So we're excited and we're moving forward with this. Um, <clears throat> So technologies, uh, we've, we've, we've been doing some good things with the technologies and bringing some advancements. Uh, as I, I think I, the last time we met, I spoke to you about the flock cameras and those are the automatic license plate reader cameras. Those have been phenomenal for assisting the sheriff department, not just with catching uh, uh, persons who have committed crimes uh, right at the time that it's, or, or shortly after it's committed, but uh, more importantly, an incredible investigative tool and in my opinion, a tool that allows us to narrow down the focus of law enforcement when they have an incident occur, give them the ability to realize when they get uh, a minimal description, narrow it down so they're not stopping every white Honda. They're able to narrow down and say it's the white Honda with the bike rack with that license plate that we're looking for. So, and they've also been instrumental in solving crime in the first three weeks. Uh, I think it was two murder vehicles, uh, something like 15 stolen cars, uh, some robbery suspects. Uh, in fact, in that first month, it was, uh, I think the captain told me they had over 500 hits on wanted vehicles. And those are, those are vehicles that are wanted for something or another. And, and uh, uh, anything from, uh, you know, a small warrant to, you know, wanted for a serious felony. Uh, we're also bringing body cameras, uh, and this is absolutely necessary, not just for our law enforcement officers, but also for our folks who are out there doing the other jobs, like our parking control and our code enforcement officers. Uh, transparency is what needs to happen in all levels of public safety, and that's what this gives us. It gives us the ability to uh, absolutely take a look at what happened and ensure that we're doing the job correctly as well as uh, the safety of our personnel out there and ensure that we're paying attention to how they're being treated. So uh, those will be coming soon. Uh, and we've we increased our city cameras. Uh, uh, there's, uh, I wish I could tell you the number. I want to say there's about 130 or so at this point, about 130 city cameras. Uh, and these are cameras that the city uses to understand traffic. But also what we've done now is we've given the sheriff's department access to those cameras. And so when they have an event, a serious event that occurs, uh, it gives them the ability to pull the cameras up and see if the vehicle they're looking for is in a particular area. So another great tool that we've now given to our sheriff's department. Um, and we are working on or, or starting to plan out building our Intelligence Crime Assessment Center. So this basically is gonna give us the ability to pay attention to everything that's going on uh, in the Antelope Valley, really, but uh, more importantly here in our city. Uh, some of the pieces that we hired, I mentioned a moment ago, we, we already hired our intelligence uh, and crime analysts. And this is a person that pays attention to not just statistics, statistics but what's going on in the world uh, uh, involving terrorism or any other uh, serious crime that could possibly come into our, our city. Well, that Crime Assessment Center is basically a high-tech center that's gonna allow us to pull all the pieces together, all the technologies, coordinate with other agencies and other state and federal entities so we can pay attention to what's going on out there. This is hyper important considering that we're gonna be bringing hydrogen to our city uh, so that we can ensure we're protecting those, you know, those facilities uh, especially. So, uh, and then our drone program, uh, graffiti tracker, uh, I, I have to mention that to you. We brought that system, it's been instrumental. It's been key in helping us uh, 
identified several individuals who've uh, been graffitiing uh, different areas around the city. Uh, in fact, uh, one thing that has really changed because of that system and because of the approach that we're now using is we've been able to get uh, I think for the first for the first three or four months here we've got we've increased our restitution that the city takes in for things like this and we're up around a hundred thousand dollars already in dealing with the individuals who damage property and getting some of the restitution back to our city uh, that have to go and repair that property so but the drone program is something that we're super excited about that's coming. Uh, we want to be able to give uh, our law enforcement officers uh, long-term air support or longer air support than they're getting. The city has been really good about this already in developing the LEAPS program, which is a fixed wing plane. Uh, but that has been extremely costly to keep that up in the air, uh, somewhere in the area of $500,000 a year. Well, and it's for a limited amount of hours that we're able to have that air support for the deputies. If you don't know, uh, the Sheriff's Department has struggled getting their helicopter up here, uh, mainly due to weather. Uh, part of it, I think, also is due to the ships usually are down in the LA Basin and have to get up over the hill in a timely manner. So the LEAPS program was brought. We've looked at the drone program. We can do that uh, and give our deputies anywhere from eight to 16 hours of air support, as well as events we needed for, for the city uh, for, I don't think it's even a quarter of that cost a year. Um, I, what we have here is a little video I wanna show you so you can get an idea how this system works. I did not pick that music. <laughs> <laughs> George Bell. So this is uh, the system we have now. We have the ability to live stream down to any device we choose. So we can live stream down straight to deputies' telephones if, if so chosen. It can fly in over 40 mile an hour wind. It has an active tracking device where we can lock it onto a vehicle and it will stay locked on that vehicle. It has the flare night vision system that helicopters and the plane have. Here's an example of the zoom. I'd just like to add that the importance of air support and a system like this cannot be understated. Uh, and it's not just about the safety, the safety of our citizens, the safety of the officers out there doing the job, but it's about giving law enforcement the ability to understand exactly what they're dealing with. When we have these large containments in our city, uh, we're able to get that thing up in a matter of minutes, give the sheriff's department a look at what they have and allow them to scale that down so we don't leave such a big imprint and, since, and so we don't affect so many of our citizens. As well as uh, when we went to watch this exhibited in Beverly Hills, uh, they actually had a call for service of a man in a park with a knife and they put the drone up and got it overhead. And of course, something like that in a park, you're sending multiple officers. The drone got overhead, zeroed in on what was in his hand and they figured out it was actually a Coke can that they had. So they were able to limit that response, which is beautiful, and not send as many officers in to that situation. So we're excited about getting this up. It'll be a mobile platform where we can get it pretty much anywhere in the city that we need. 
And so we, we also realize that we're, we're struggling with our community preservation, our code enforcement and things like that. So we're increasing our number of code enforcement officers. We're, uh, we're gonna hire six more code enforcement officers. And uh, uh, our approach is to try and work with the community, uh, educate, work with them, get them to fix the issues or areas if it's a property or a house. And if we can't gain that cooperation, then we'll look at other steps we can take. But it's about education and cooperation first. So uh, we're coming up with an idea of curb in. So we wanna look at what's going on in the street, try and fix that, and then onto the sidewalk, and then try and work with the residents regarding the property. So. That is the end of my presentation. And next up is George again. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. Um, when we're when, when you're we're finished, we may have some questions Absolutely. Of, of all of you. So yeah, we'll we'll all be available for that. I just got to tell you, Rod's been doing a great job, and he's also the only person working at the city that can match my sport coat game. <laughs> Back and forth. It's back and forth. It's a constant battle. It's a constant battle. So let's talk about the numbers. Uh, as, as if anybody watched the council meeting, they talked about how this was the boring part, so they leave me till the end. But it's, it's, it's necessary to talk about the numbers. We got to know the numbers. Uh, so let's talk about the history. So in 2020-21, the tax was approved. That was the first year we were able to collect it. We had a quarter year of collection that year. We collected was anticipated back then, uh, Chairman Bose, if you recall, we were only gonna get $3 million that year. We ended up getting five um, in, that, in that three month period. Uh, then forecasting into 21, 22, 22 million, 22.6 million cumulatively up to that point, just shy of 28 million, which was um, allocated last year. Um, this current fiscal year that we're in, we have a budget of 21 million where we are going to receive all of that probably by the end of August, right? Because all of our, it's all based on our receipts through June. They file their taxes, actually September. So they, they file their taxes in July. We get the allocation um, in well into September, starting in September. So we'll be able to true up and by the time we meet the next time in October, we'll get you a true number as to what we collected in the current fiscal year. And then the projection for the next fiscal year is 20 million, 800,000. Uh, so that's, it's going down a little bit. We talked about that just prior to the meeting that I think we peaked in the short term in that first year, a little bit of carryover from COVID. Um, sales tax is down a little bit as well. So if you actually add normal sales tax, to the measure LC money, we're down about 4% among the, those two revenues. It's, it may seem insignificant, but 4% of those two revenues is about $2.1 million. And so if we're total, if we're down $2.1 million, that's, you know, that could be seen as 20 bodies, right? And so we have to find our way as we start projecting out and seeing those reductions um, to, to make one, make sure that we're, we're not building the, our base operational spending to where we're that sensitive to an adjustment like that. So we've, you've saw today a long list of one-time projects. So we spent a lot of time kind of spending in the last three years focusing on one-time projects, one-time projects. It's inevitable eventually as we develop public safety, as we develop some of these other programs that the, the spending and the cost of those long-term programs, those are people we're hiring that, that end up being long-term expenditures, they grow inevitably and it starts to squeeze out those one-time projects. So we're just gonna, we're gonna project this out forward a few years and we'll talk a little more about that in, when we come back together in October when we can true up the 2022-23 number to, to, from a trending standpoint and see what we see. But uh, Jason, as you know, is very good at revenue generation. And so we're working on a couple other things to try to offset and create new streams of revenue uh, for the general fund to help offset any losses that we have there. But this is the breakdown and what's before you tonight for consideration is the 2024 uh, measure LC allocation um, starting. So what you have on the left is what we allocated last year. So you see, you can notice the, the number of line items because there are a lot of one-time projects listed last year. Uh, they've reduced this year. We have really just one one-time item that's that's being funded with measure LC. And, and right then, right before we go any further, I just wanna make sure that we're clear Measure LC is a general fund, general revenue, right? There's not a, a fund or a pot of 
measure LC money that we that the tax goes into we spend it goes into the general fund and it's spent collectively with the rest of the revenues that we have in the general fund if we were to segregate it out and make it uh, for specific purposes it would change the complete dynamic at which it was originally approved right so if we, if we were to uh, have it approved uh, with specifically saying public safety that would change it from a simple majority vote to a super majority vote so instead of needing 50 percent plus one vote it would have needed two-thirds percent plus one vote right but so by keeping it a general tax in the general fund the it, it keeps it true to the original way that it was approved so what we've been able to kind of really change the conversation from these are measure lc expenditures to saying these are the things that we would not have been able to do if it were not for Measure LC, if that makes sense. And so what we're doing is we would not be able to expand public safety to the volume that we're expanding public safety if it was not for Measure LC. We would not have been able to invest in the event center the way that we're doing if it wasn't for Measure LC. We wouldn't be able to sustain operations in the community center as well as the LPAC um, center with, if it were not for the, the, the approval of Measure LC and, and along down the line, right? And so as we, um, you're gonna to start to see a lot of these programs really be repeated every year because they're, they're being sustained through the receipts, the continued receipts of Measure LC funding. Um, but to continue down the line, so you have LPAC operations last year, it was 2.1 million with $835,000 in, um, in capital one-time funding for the, for the uh, facility. And so you talked a little bit about that. We have an ongoing obligation to continue to sustain it through this next fiscal year, $1.8 million. And anyone want to ask the question of how much does it cost for LPAC to operate? That is the full budget for LPAC to operate in a, in a single fiscal year. Same with the community center. Uh, last fiscal year was the full first full year of operation for the uh, community center. Um, we had a lot of startup stuff. We, we had to buy a lot of stuff to get it started up uh, last year. Now it's more of an operation, ongoing operational budget that you have there, so it's 1.4, and we probably expect to see that increase as salaries increase, as the cost of operating increases. Um, we'll, see the, we'll see that increase every year. The $781,000 that we spent on those original positions, those positions still exist. Those people are still here, so that's an ongoing cost uh, that we can attribute to Measure LC. Um, and the illegal dumping program uh, that we talked about, the tidy program, uh, that, that uh, Marissa discussed, that's a program that's going to continue to be supported and without Measure LC, wouldn't, we would not be able to continue to support that without cutting significantly in other areas. <clears throat> Same with the new positions that were at last year and then the expansion of that citywide camera system was one that we were only able to do, we, we've been putting about a million dollars a year into that citywide camera system that Rod spoke about, spoke about and we'll be able to continue that as long as we're getting those revenues. So with that, I'd love to give the, the Jason chant of uh, we're creating a better tomorrow together and he puts an emphasis on together because it does take, a, it does take all of us, all of our staff, all the department heads to really, you know, I, I just collect the money. Money comes in, I write checks, you'll see my name on them, but it's these folks in their departments that's actually doing the work and getting it done and going after it. So um, it does take, it takes us all together. So with that, we are all available to take any questions you may have. Thank you. Um, I have a feeling the, the gentleman with this other sport coat. Yeah, he, he had to step out. Oh, he had to step out. He's right. He, he's outside. So if he, he, you do have a rod question, we can call him in. But I'm sure some of the members, uh, all of us, may have questions or comments we'd like to make. But uh, Kevin, do you have questions or comments? Anyone? Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, I had a, a comment. I think in your presentation, you said that the. Uh, the illegal dumping was up some 700% last year. I mean, that's. Um, it increased uh, about 361% oh, since last year. Yeah that's, yeah, that's quite a bit. Yeah. It's a lot. <laughs> yeah, that's concerning. I wonder what, uh, what we should do to kind of reduce that overall. I mean, that's a big, a big burden for you guys, but I, I see it all over the place. But <clears throat> I'm glad that we've. Uh, We've allocated money in that department, but hopefully we can find a way to curtail it somehow. Yeah. But uh, the uh, website reporting for illegal dumping and, and all of the other capital issues as it relates to streets and sidewalks and all those other kinds of calls or notices you get, um, any idea the 
the utilization of that um, system. I mean, that's that's normally, I guess, how illegal dumping is reported, right? Yes. So. Uh City staff, you know, whether they're in maintenance or utilities or they're field inspectors, they help patrol the city. But a lot of what we find out about is from citizens reporting in our Comcate system. And so I, I think that we've gotten the word out there about Comcate, and that's partly why we're getting so many reports now, so that we can go out there and get to them as soon as we can. I, you know, and I, I turn stuff in periodically depending on where I'm driving and, and and um, the challenge sometimes, however, is that, you know, you're driving down the, a public street, there's no place to park. Right. To stop, take a photograph, send the information in, whatever, well, and then you forget about it or what, you know, or traffic's so heavy, you, you know, you potentially cause an accident by stopping and that. But, you know, I don't know how you, you know, I'm not smart enough to know how you promote that, uh, interaction with the public to utilize that system. I, the more people that would use it, sure, you'd be cleaning up more locations, but I think it's a matter of prevention, too. The more you clean up, the less there is and the less preponderance of folks are there going to take advantage and yeah. dump out in the public right away. Yeah, that's so, true. So, I mean, the system works great. It, you guys respond quite often the same day. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's uh, you know, I know, I know no one spoke about, um, because, you know, because about homeless issues, um, because we're focusing on this portion of the budget. So those budgeting issues as it relates to uh, monitoring and dealing with the homeless population and whatever methodologies that are going on is out of the general fund in a different Different methodology, right? So, so first, just to add, I apologize. I've got a little something going on outside there. Uh, just to add uh, to the when you spoke about uh, uh, getting it out to the community, how to report these things. So, part of our approach is we're doing an, an education campaign, and it'll include how to use that process. Uh, we're we're using a different approach to our code enforcement and our parking. Uh, personnel uh, we found out that we, we've we're going to train all of those folks to do all of those jobs and that way we've got a huge a, a larger cadre of individuals that can address the issues including the new six that we're bringing on so we won't just have parking control officers we'll have uh, parking control officers that can also handle code enforcement issues and increase our cadre and ability to deal with issues uh, out there in the community. So, um, and a big part of it is an education campaign. Now on the homeless part, so one of the parts of our, uh, one of the things, well as you know we have a homeless team that goes out and tries to provide services and deals with the encampments and things like that. So we realize that we, uh, the city should have uh, a kind of a social services piece that deals with some of the other issues out there. And so we have, uh, we have hired a, a homeless and mental health coordinator. Now, she just assumed the position uh, just a couple weeks ago, but she's going to work on the other side of it and, uh, as mentioned before, partner with the other county entities that deal with the homeless issues. Uh, this city is fantastic in what they do already to try and deal with our, our problems. So uh, I'm amazed. In fact, I'll tell you now, uh, uh, because there's large concerns about the homeless coming up on the trains. Uh, uh, a couple of the council members and the city manager told me they're going down to ride the train up, uh, and they're doing it on days where we're hearing that this might be occurring so they can get a bird's eye view. I told them, well, you're not going without me. So, <laughs> so we're all going down in about a week or two and take a look, but that's just a, a sign of, of the city paying attention to what's going on out there. I think our social services piece uh, is gonna help quite a bit too, and, and hopefully give us a greater ability to get individuals to take the services that we offer. So, some more things coming. Yeah, that is a challenge, and the, I mean, you have many nonprofit organizations, large, uh, well-funded, uh, organizations here in the community, um, 
um, the Valley Oasis primarily, uh, as I, you know, I'm personally very familiar with, um, that provide wonderful services mm -hmm. and having someone on staff at the city to help coordinate the, the overall effort mm -hmm. from the city and interacting with those various social service agencies, I think will be a, a, a really a blessing overall to the, to the issue and uh, I won't call it a problem, it's an issue. Yep, there uh, we go. Uh, it, it, just, it is what it is and those folks, God bless them, they need service. Agreed, agreed sir. I did have a, a, well, a statement and a question. One, um, thankful for the, um, the graffiti team that's been coming out. Um, just want to express my gratitude for that because I know Councilman Doris has uh, been on our back about making sure we're guarding the church and, and things like that. So I'm thankful that uh, for the response times and, and uh, a lot of that stuff has subsided significantly since all these efforts have been put forth. So I just wanted to express my gratitude for that. Um, in addition, uh, last time we were here, we talked about the hybrid policing model and uh, the community peace officers and stuff. And I just wanted to just kind of get an update on that and how that's been working out with, with those people, if you don't mind. Absolutely. So um, <clears throat> so we, we saw them as the last kind of piece of the hybrid program that we needed to hire because there were so many other things we needed to get in place, including leadership, the right leadership, uh, policies, ensuring we have real good policies to oversee what we're doing, body cams, uh, all those things. So, so now we're at the point where we're getting ready to, to start hiring those officers and that'll be a, a rather extensive process. Uh, one, we wanna make sure we hire the right individuals and two, it's already a lengthy hiring process when you're looking at police officers, understandable. So uh, that's the way it should be. So, um, um, so we're at the point now where we're doing that uh, uh, we're, we're actually currently hiring the sergeant who was going to supervise those vehicles. That was, uh, excuse me, those individuals. That was just uh, put out on the city's website uh, to get uh, qualified individuals to apply. Uh, we're going to do like we've done with uh, pretty much uh, every individual we've hired since I've been here. We're going to invite the community to participate in the interview process. You gentlemen are welcome. As well, if, if, if one of you are interested, please send me an email. Uh, uh, we, we understand the importance of having community input on the individuals that are gonna be out there providing the safety. So uh, as mentioned earlier, we have a projected date of January that we should have those officers hired and uh, uh, there'll be a, a training process, obviously, uh, in preparing them to go out. And uh, once again, it is a, uh, we're hiring officers to do the community engagement part of, of law enforcement. Uh, the Sheriff's Department will still handle all the other stuff. You'll still call 911, uh, but we want some folks to go and partner and connect and uh, build relationships with the community and work on identifying the long-term issues and trying to address those. So. That's yeah. amazing. I, I think we have a, a rare shot here in, in the Antelope Valley, well, Lancaster specifically, to try to do things differently, you know, kind of starting from scratch. So I, I appreciate you, Rod. And uh, yeah, I, I'm, I'm available for anything you need. And as far as that's concerned, I, I'd shoot. love to help. Absolutely. Shoot me an email. We'd love, we'd love for any of you to, to participate in that, in that process and help us make the right selections. So. We're just a phone call away. <laughs> the um, LPAC, LPAC improvements, um, a portion of them is still pending, right? Uh, you... Yes, correct. Um, we're finishing up the LED light project. Um, it'll be uh, done by August. Um, and then we'll have the number of um, projects for this next fiscal year, which will be the exterior painting, uh, the uh, black box flooring, and the renovation of the artist common area. So there's a number of things. We've got some other projects that are we're working on plans and projecting for next fiscal year to ask for more money. So. And what did you say? You have 28 bookings or something? We have 28 wow. uh, season shows booked, and that doesn't include the Arts for Youth and the... Um, uh, companies and residents. That's just the season shows that the city books. 
Memphis. The notice I got said that we can't we can't purchase tickets for a, another couple three weeks or yeah. Something. So um, in don't, July don't we, we get priority. If you are in the there, there's a if you're a season ticket holder and then you're I think there's a pick six and picks three. You, those people that participate in that program, um, they can purchase in July, late July, and then it opens to the everyone else, the general public, in August. So okay. Yeah. So you got to get in on the. I'll on be the, sure to put it on my calendar. Then. Right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. I did have a, another question regarding the community center. Sure. Uh, the the summer program that you guys had going last year mm -hmm. for the kids is that something that's not happening this year? Uh, yeah, we have a summer program this year. We have a number of uh, different. We have a camp, and then we've got a number a number of classes like the DJing, the um, technology classes, the literacy classes. Those are all going this summer. So we have like a girl. Uh, a girls Make Beats and some other cool programs that are all STEM-based and um, fun and learning at the same time. So there's a number of programs there this summer. Oh, yeah. My, my son, he uh, he participated last year. He was in one of the pictures at the okay, last Okay, awesome. He, Very he good. He loves the summer camp. Uh, anything city, we pretty much try to attend. As Very as good. Very good. Yeah, I had a question about that. My wife was signing him up for programs and uh, I don't know, maybe she didn't get the, the Yeah, there's a number of programs there this summer. So we had to dial back a little bit because... We ha I mentioned the plumbing repairs that we're going to have. We had some, unfortunately, that's a, a very old building, and um, we did the renovations, and it's beautiful, um, but, you know, some of the interior stuff is sneaking up on us now that it's in full use with hundreds of kids there during the summer and the school year, so um, we've got to do some repairs for that. So we did, we did dial back some of our program this summer um, so we don't, you know, overflow the, the, uh, the plumbing system there. So. That makes sense. Thank you. You're welcome. Very good, thank you. Mar Marissa, the uh, facility at the fairgrounds, the mm -hmm. 140,000 square foot. So the, the funding, this portion of the funding is to complete the design portion of it and in engineering go out to bid. Is that what's anticipated? Yes, that's correct. Um, we've done the, um, the conceptual design to 30% and now they're working towards preliminary construction documents. And so we should have that um, in the fall. So where does the money come from to build this $25 million facility? Well, did you want to talk to <laughs> yeah, oh. Or whatever the number is. Well, we're partnering with um, other agencies. Um, the state is contributing. Um, the county of LA has committed to contributing. The city of Palmdale will be contributing and the city of Lancaster. So actually, that's interesting that you ask because an hour ago, they did a press conference for a $20 million contribution towards that, that facility from the, from, from the state. And so uh, they're over at the fairgrounds. They did a uh, ribbon cutting and a press conference to talk about their contribution. So we're able to actually generate quite a bit of money uh, for the facility. Ultimately, though, um, the remaining balance, whatever that may be after everyone else contributes, is going to be financed here with utilizing our city general funds. And I want to kind of point out, if you look at the event center and evacuation center line there, you notice $1.5 million is listed on the ongoing funding, and 2.5 is considered one-time funding. So the reason why I separated it out, that $4 million is all going to go towards construction design and so forth. However, <clears throat> I want to make sure that I have a plug in the future um, to reserve $1.5 million for the debt service that would be needed to, to fund uh, the ongoing um, debt that will be acquired to build the facility. Um, if 1.5 million a year gives us about 25 million dollars in, in, in financing. Three million gets us 50 million. So if we think we need uh, 50 million, then um, City of Palmdale has has agreed to participate to the tune of about 1.5 1, 1. million, and we have 1.5 million put the two together. We can afford 50 million dollars of financing, and so that's why it's separated that way. So if you're thinking what's What's ongoing? How's it ongoing if it's all upfront costs to complete the design? I'm just allocating it that way so I can include the $1.5 million in the city's operational budget so that we can sustain and continue to program and get used to spending it in that manner so it's there for the debt service. There was, um, at one point, I feel like when we first started talking about this facility, there was talk of, like, a sports complex on mm -hmm. the indoor sport is that something that's still happening in yeah. terms of like so, the indoor basketball volleyball correct and marissa can probably speak more to the design but the idea is a, it's a multi-use facility that can accommodate all of those things yeah the 140 uh, square feet 
Um, it's for the evacuation center, but it will double as an event center for um, different sporting events. We can fit multiple basketball courts, multiple volleyball courts, wrestling mats, all kinds of different sporting and other types of events as well. Just as uh, someone that's out in the community seeing where we need my kid, he plays travel ball and then so many other organizations out here that do. One of the issues we have up here mainly is that uh, it's too hot in the summer for kids to be outside and then when it's cold it's too windy so in terms of like sporting events uh, a basketball complex up here is something that's like <coughs> desperately needed uh reason being because with the shift in the school timing uh, a lot of the organizations that are independent of the schools like you know not the regular basketball teams or what have you uh, they're unable to find facilities to practice and so um, you know we got seven eight nine year old kids outside at 8 30 at night it's freezing it, you know all kind of stuff like that so just something to uh, consider in, in terms of that, you know, um, and we have to travel like way, way out of the Antelope Valley. So many kids have to, I'm talking two and three hours just to compete in tournaments when we could be hosting those things up here on our own. And that's another massive way to generate income as well for the city. It's a, a huge thing. We have to go Anaheim and uh, Chatsworth and Chino and like all kind of places to, to participate in these things because it's not something we offer here locally outside of a school complex which isn't available all the time. And so um, just, you know, just to drop a bug in your ear about that. Um, and uh, we have tons of organizations that are willing to help with that effort as well. Yeah, we have, it, we have the capacity for a lot of courts all at the same time. It's fully enclosed, climate controlled, lighting. It's actually gonna be really, really nice. <laughs> I think I appreciate the dropping the bug, but <clears throat> Exciting it's very time. difficult to build an evacuation center waiting for an emergency to use it, right? And so, <laughs> right? So it's gonna be $75 million, $50 million facility. We're, we're gonna put it to use. It's going, all those things have been considered. The space has been specifically designed to accommodate those types of activities. So we can generate the revenue to help support that $1.5 million, $1 million <laughs> mortgage that we're gonna have on the facility, right? So um, it's, it's that is going to have a community kitchen. It's going to have a, a lot of other revenue generating aspects to it that's going to help, help bridge that gap between what we're dedicating in the 1.5 and what the actual operational costs are going to be. So think about that's really just going to pay the mortgage. We're still going to have a power bill. We're still going to have a gas bill. <laughs> we're going to have all those things. It's going to ultimately be independent because we're, we're, we're designing it to, to be off the grid and hydrogen supported as far as power is concerned. But there's still operation costs that are associated with all that. Curious, George. Um, since we have community partners uh, with uh, with the city of Palmdale as it relates to the utilization of this facility that Lancaster and its partners are developing, mm -hmm. including Palmdale, Palmdale is also doing a facility under a similar partnership, right? From to to some degree, it's to not some precisely degree. the same. Yeah, our facility is is going to be larger, and quite frankly, our facility is the one that's garnering the most financial support outside of both cities. And so, right. from what I understand, there um, there's not going to be as large and highly used as ours, but very as as much equally as important to their community. Well, their as source ours of will funding be. is less. Right, right, right. So, how do you see the governance of this? Oh, the center. facility. It's I, going to be through a partnership with the fair board, is from what I understand, and there's going to be a document coming soon that that um, so it's defines that governance. Yet, yeah. they're, it, they're working on it. They're working on it, and so before it actually comes out on the council agenda, I, I don't want to speak on it, but it is something that they are developing now as we speak. But the site, the the real estate it sits on, belongs to the state. That right? is correct. That is correct. So. You have that entity, and then you also have your other funders mm -hmm. who would also want a seat at the table, I would assume, yeah? Yes, and so the gov ultimate governance is probably going to have representation for everybody that contribute more than a, a small chunk of change, I imagine. Be so little, the, the be state will be... slow dancing going on. There's, exactly. Up, yeah. As you can see me slow dancing now and defining to <laughs> try to explain it. So as that's going to be developed... You're going to you're going to see <clears throat> you're going to see some definitely some representation from our council. Exciting, very exciting. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Well, thank you. Mm -hmm. Are we done? Okay, I think we've I think we've uh, 
worn you guys out. We appreciate everything you. <laughs> we appreciate worn out. everything you've done and, and the presentation this evening and how thorough it was is excellent. All right. So if there's any more to be added, anything more you want nothing to talk more, about? Nothing more. Nothing more to be added before you tonight is the is the consideration of the list of Measure LC expenditures. All right. So there isn't anything on our agenda to vote on. So what's that? Oh, there is. Well, I don't see it. myself on here. So although formal adoption has not been established and required by the council to move it forward, um, the council has expressed an interest in seeing a concurrence from the Measure LC board of that list. Um, so if, if you want to take a verbal action to, to state that you are in concurrence with their, um, at, at this point they've seen it once at the, pre, at the Last council meeting and next Tuesday it'll be before them for final adoption. Um, they're asking in, informally for your concurrence on the list. So if you want to take an action to speak to that, well, that's we fine. Can, or if, or we, can, if, we can make it as as informal or as formal as necessary. I mean, I I can. This is what I would suggest if if the other members agree that that a motion which I will make to uh, approve and recommend to the city council adoption or adoption. I don't know if adoption is the right word. Let me think about it a minute. It could be as simple as a recommendation to the council to approve it ultimately next Tuesday on uh, June 27th. All right. So the, the motion would be to recommend to the city council to adopt uh, the Measure LC budget? Yes. That's the motion. Good okay. enough? You got it? That sounds good to me. Yeah, and I second the motion. Thank you. Okay. All right, any discussion? Let's vote. Uh, passes three zero with two absent. All right. Anything further from the members? No. I have nothing further. No. All right. Thank you. All right. Thank you. From staff, anything further you care to add? I have nothing further. I just appreciate your time tonight and uh, look forward to meeting with you again in uh, October. We look forward to it as well. Thank you very much. We stand adjourned and until a meeting in October yet to be determined.